but before I was actually school age, I decided I wanted to be a car designer. I actually saw a Porsche one day. I thought it was gorgeous, and I said, that's what I want to do when I grow up, is design cars, not necessarily Porsches, but design cars. And then about the age of 10, I just totally fell in love with Jaguar. And I wrote to them, and I actually asked them, um, what did I do to become a car designer for Jaguar? So I got some advice from the top guy there at the time, was Bill Haynes, very famous engineer. I still have the letter that he sent me, and he advised me what to do, and I did just that. 30 years later, here I am. What makes a car beautiful is to get every line and every surface right, and discipline them. I've got to put too much into them and not put too little into them. And that's what creates a beautiful car. And every line you do has to be executed in such a way where you can enjoy looking at it. And again, that's a discipline. And it's very easy to do a line. But it's very difficult to do one which you can actually enjoy looking at. And you think of the surface of a Mark II Jaguar and uh, the doors, for instance, very, very pure. You couldn't get more pure than that. And that was part of the charm of the car. It's a kind of British understatement, really. Now, and so it was capturing those elements. And then there was sort of the little elements of sculpture as well. Uh, which was great fun, and the detailing and everything which was just great fun. And the overall combination of these things in the Mark II Jaguar, the XJ, the original XJ Jaguar, is what made a Jaguar so special. So it's capturing those elements, but reiterating them into a 21st century way. So the values are still the same. If you look at this car, it has these little sculpted areas of it over the headlamps, for instance. It has very pure surfacing, very disciplined surfacing. And so that's what really makes a Jaguar. I get a little frustrated when people make this public reference in Jaguar and Ford and, and um, in, a, in a negative way. I, it's utterly wrong. I don't get it in the UK, funnily enough, but I get it more in the US. And uh, I don't know what it is, but what we've got to do is work harder to help people appreciate that um, although it is part of the Ford family, we're very much our own, you know, in charge of our own destiny and in what we do. And we do produce Jaguars from a Jaguar base in Coventry in England. Now, where the Ford Advantage comes in is that um, it, it, it's allowed us to learn about process and quality, because quality is about process, really, and, 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 and continuity. And we've actually mastered that quite well. And what's interesting is, because we're a small company, a small team, probably amongst the smallest within the Ford group, we've actually taken that on probably as, as better than anybody else, to be honest. I mean, Jagger quality is probably amongst the best in the whole of the Ford family, and we're very proud of that. But it's because of Ford process that we've managed to get that. Yes, there are fundamental architectural things as well that we can pick up from Ford. Wiring looms, common components that people don't see. There is no reason this earth why we don't share these parts, especially if we can get them a little bit cheaper. And we should use them. And we should use systems and, uh, you know, just simple things like batteries, bearings, all that stuff. Huge benefit to us. If we were on our own as a small company, it would cost us so much more. So the advantage of being with Ford is, is, is uh, invaluable. And, uh, and we're very pleased to be part of Ford, absolutely.